Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Christophe Fauger. I'm a professor of economics and finance. Welcome to Mastering Money. This is session one, what is money? Money creation, the classical explanations, part two. What are the learning goals for this session? We're going to go through an example of money creation that we started in a previous presentation within the framework of explanation number two, which is the explanation that money is created through the fractional reserve system. And then in a second step, we're going to examine how it is possible for a single bank to create money using accounting entries of virtual money. So let's just start first with an example of money creation. This is the first round. We have bank one that is a commercial bank and it has a required reserve ratio of 10% of client's deposit. That means its amount of cash that it has as an asset must be 10% of the size of the client's deposit. Imagine that you have a new deposit that comes to the bank of 100 euros. In this case, bank one can now extend more credit and it will do so to client one. How much will it uh, lend to client one? Only 90 euros. And the reason is that it needs to uh, keep 10% of the new deposit, which was 100 euros, it needs to keep then 10 euros as cash reserves and can only now land the remainder, which is 90 euros. But in a, in a certain way, it has created money because this, uh, this new client didn't have the money in, in their account and now they have 90 euros to spend. On the other hand, it's important to emphasize that the balance sheet of bank one has not extended, has not expanded more than by the value of the initial deposit of 100 euros. Let's now look at round number two. And in round number two, we're looking at bank number two that receives a deposit of 90 euros, has the same required reserve ratio. And let's see how it receives that 90 euros deposit. Well, it receives it because client one went out and made a purchase in a business and spent their 90 euros. And that business happens to have their account at bank two. So they're making a deposit of 90 euros. Bank two can now extend more credit and they will do so to client number two. How much of that can they extend? They receive 90 euros. They need to keep nine euros, 10% of that as cash reserves. So they can only extend about 81 euros uh, to uh, lend to a client two. So in the end, client two receives an extra amount of money that didn't exist before in the amount of 81 euros. And once again, the balance sheet of bank two has not expanded beyond the initial cash influx of 90 euros. But if we look at the amount of money that's created in the system, it looks like in aggregate, there's actually new money that's been created. Let's look at how much. The total amount of money created that actually depends on the required reserve ratio of 10%, and it can be computed as such. Take the new amount of money that was injected in the banking system of that 100 euros and divide it by the required reserve ratios. So you have 100 divided by 10%, that's 1,000. But of course, the 100 euros was already there in the system. So to see how the banking, how much the banking system has actually created of new money, it's 1,000 minus the initial uh, influx, the initial deposit of 100. And so that means it's 900 euros. The measure one divided by the required reserve ratio is actually called the money multiplier, and here it equals 10. It is important that 
to note that none of the bank in this example at any point in the process has been able to extend their balance sheets beyond the initial deposit. However, collectively, the system has created 900 euros. We can see it through this, uh, the, the rounds, the successive round. Round number one, 90 euros. Then the money was deposited in bank two, which then created uh, 81 euros. And then bank three, and so on and so forth. All these are new amounts of money which will add up and when we add them uh, each successive round we come to the final result of 1000. As previously seen in the measures of aggregate money we know that the multiplier in Europe is about 3 because M1 which contains uh, deposit, client deposit is about 3 times equal to the monetary base which is uh, the cash reserves uh, of the banking system. So what are the kinks in this explanation? <clears throat> An easy criticism is that these multiple rounds of money can go on as long as the loans are not being repaid. If they were being repaid, then the money creation would stop at that point and it would be what the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, series of money creation would be partially sterilized and the effective multiplier, money multiplier would be smaller. Another potential kink in this explanation is that in many countries, the required reserve ratio is zero. And this is Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Hong Kong. And if that's the case, then potentially banks can create an unlimited amount of money because they don't have to hold any uh, cash reserves. So that is a potential puzzle uh, to explain how much money creation would happen in these countries. <clears throat> Furthermore, why are we focused solely on cash transfers? In fact, nowadays banks do uh, compensations uh, of their accounts or their transactions using electronic uh, um, accounting writings of debits and credits. So money is actually virtual. And in that case, Paul Samuelson's argument doesn't really hold water any longer. The argument being that none of these individual banks can actually create new money uh, beyond what they receive as cash. But if money is no longer cash, but digital money or digits written on a computer system, then uh, we may have a different outcome. So let's look at an example of that. <clears throat> Imagine that money is uh, exists on a computer. It's a digital uh, money. And so bankwise, a commercial bank still has a cash reserve ratio of 10%. And now you have a new 100 euros that appear in their uh, asset side of their uh, balance sheet. How did it come there? Well, in this case, we assume that this bank sold one of their treasury bonds that's worth 100 euros. And therefore, they are uh, uh, getting that 100 euros in cash. What can they do now? Well, they will lend to client number one. And how much will they lend? Well, if they can create money by just writing and typing on a computer the amount of money that's desired, they can actually create 1,000 uh, euro uh, for uh, client one. In fact, here's really what happens. They have the 100 euros they can, uh, they can uh, lend and they can create virtual money of one, the amount of 1,000. Why? Because uh, if we look at the amount of cash that they have, they, they have the 100 that they've received and the amount of deposit that they can create is 1,000 and they still uh, have the 10% required reserve ratio respected. In this case, so they have created an extra 
900 euros of money, in this case credit or virtual money, by using simply an accounting entry. Is this possible? That's going to be a question. Is it possible for a bank to create money that way? And if so, are there any limits to this type of activity? And this is going to be uh, something we're going to further investigate in the next uh, presentations. Thank you very much.